Hello everybody, Jim Dandy here for LearnMQL4.com where you learn how to program, as it says up there, your own scripts, custom indicators, and expert advisors. If you're wanting to learn how to program, how to put your own idea, your own strategy into code, this is the place you need to go. This is the course that you need to take to learn how to do that. I'm getting a lot of good feedback about it on my testimonials page. A lot of people are writing in telling me how much they're enjoying it. The video that I'm going to make right now for it's mostly for my YouTube viewers because I'm getting a lot of questions uh, in regard to an uh, indicator that I used to use, or excuse me, a function that I used to use called is new candle. The purpose of the is new candle function, if you've watched some of my old videos, is to make sure before a certain function ran that it was a indeed a new candle on the chart. It wasn't if it was a function that you didn't want it running every tick and keep checking to see if a moving average is crossed or whatever, but you only wanted to run one time per candle, then wait till the next candle and check again. Then it would um, it would call the is new candle function to make sure that it was a new candle. Well, there was, was a little flaw in that strategy that you're going to learn in this video, and that's what this video is about. The way that I do now that I write functions, functions that I only want to run once per candle. Uh, I use this particular code that I'm going to show you guys how to do. So that's what this is about. Click the subscribe button. And if you are a subscriber, if you're already subscribed to the channel, let me put this out there. Make sure that you click that little icon there next to the subscribe, that little bell looking thing that makes sure that you get notified whenever I put out a video. Make sure you have your notifications turned on so that when I upload a video, you'll find out about it. Okay, let's get to the coding. explain to you what you're looking at here on the left is a one minute euro usd chart it's got a couple of moving averages on it a 5 ema and a 21 ema or exponential moving average and then on the right you see a little indicator that i've written uh, called test and in that um, indicator we have uh, declared some variables for the 5 EMA here and for the 21 EMA. And then we have some simple rules that said if the bid is less than that moving average, then we're going to sound an alert saying so. If it's greater than, we're going to sound an alert saying so. Same thing with the 21 moving average. And of course, the problem that you get into if you just leave it like this is that uh, it won't quit telling us. If I load this on the chart right now, Every tick that comes in, it keeps alerting on every tick, and that's not what we really want. We probably only wanted to let us know like once per candle, so that if a moving average crosses, let me delete this off the chart so we don't have to listen to that, but if a moving average cross happens or a MACD signal, whatever we have programmed happens, we and a new candle starts, we want it to sound an alert, send us a notification, an email, whatever it is, but we only wanted to do it once on the candle. We don't want to just fill up our email box or send notifications like crazy to our iPhone. So a lot of times what we will do is we'll write um, a function like this. In some of my earlier videos on YouTube, you'll see me, I have written a function like this called is new candle. And it simply stores a static date time variable called saved candle time. And then it checks to see if the time of the current candle that we are on is what we already have saved in static memory right now and if it is if we've already saved it then it's not a new candle we've been here and done this before and it returns false however if that's not the case if these other lines will run below this return line here and it will save this new candle time in the saved candle time variable and it'll return true so what we could do is there's a couple of different things we can do. I'll show you what you should not do, first of all. We should not say if the bid is less than the moving average right here and it's a new candle. We don't want to do this, and I'll show you why. Let me just cut and paste this. Okay, then I'll compile it. 
Let me drop it on the chart over here. And we can see it goes off only once. Let me clear this out down here. Let me recompile it to make it run. And you see the problem is that all the information that we got was for the five moving average. We did not get any information about the 21 moving average, even though it's a, it's a new candle. If we look here in 10, nine seconds, we're going to get a new candle. And notice down here, the information that we get on that new candle is only about the five moving average you see here. And the reason for that is up here on this very first line, as soon as we call the is new candle and it returns uh, true that it is a new candle and it runs this line, once it does that down here, this static variable gets updated. In other words, once this first line runs, it is no longer a new candle because it saves it right here and then all these subsequent lines that call that function it's already been saved by the time it gets there so you wouldn't want to do that what you could do is this you could put all of this code and make it you could make it all dependent Oops, too much there let me get this out of here you can put all of this code in one if statement up here that says if it's new candle time put this all in here Now I messed around let the markets close on me before I got done showing you this so the only way that I can make it sound the alert now is every time that I hit the compile button but you notice that now uh, written this way when I compile it does check both of them in here. Alright so the pros to doing it this way making you an is new candle function is that you could conceivably take this function and put it off into an header file and into an MQH file that you can include in all of your future uh, indicators or expert advisors. Or you could maybe make you a, a method in one of your classes that you include in your files that has this is new candle functionality to it. But the drawback is that uh, if you have more than one thing that is needs to know whether it's a new candle or not, remember that once that first thing on that tick calls the is new candle function, even if it was a new candle, it sets it to where it's not a new candle anymore. So any subsequent calls on that same tick is going to return that it's false, that it's not a new candle. So the, the only time that the is new candle function can be called is one time per candle and only on the first tick. So if you're running something on a four hour chart or a one hour chart, the only time this function, all of the things that are supposed to happen on a new candle have to be within those brackets of the is new candle call. So this is not what I normally do. I don't uh, at all anymore use an is new candle function. What I have come to do because normally in my expert advisors or my indicators I do have things going on that I want to be monitored on every tick and so I, I don't try to separate my uh, on calculator on tick uh, function into two sections one thing that happens only one tick a candle and a whole bunch of other things that happen on every tick of the candle what I normally do is if I'm writing a function that's checking something or or giving a signal or taking a trade and I know that I only wanted to do that one time when a new candle opens, uh, I will put in that function the ability for it to check to see if it's a new candle before it does whatever it is that it does. Now what I'm about to show you here, we're going to write another indicator because I want to show you that you can use the same static variable in any function that you write and in any function that you bring into your programs and it can have the same name and it won't make any difference I'll show you what I mean uh, let me make another example test indicator here okay what I've done I've made a second test indicator called test 2 and in this one I've included the on timer function uh, down here because that's what we're going to be using now to make this thing fire off since how the market is closed. So the on calculate function, I really don't care. I'm going to move the on timer function up here to the top so that we can see it. Okay. 
right there okay now we want this on timer function to go off about every second so we're going to do an event set timer function call here and we're going to set it to go every one second like so what this does is it makes this function run every second even when the markets closed okay so now let's go into our on timer function and the purpose of this little tutorial here is to we're not really trying to accomplish anything put anything on the chart but I want to show you the peculiar way uh, that static variables work that you may not know about and uh, so that we can take advantage of it when we write our functions in the future so let me I digress here let me show you what we're going to do let's let's declare a static variable uh, right here in the on timer function remember this is going to go off every second and we'll declare a static integer called tick and what we'll do look, first of all let's just have it print that okay now let me load test 2 on the chart over here and you can see over here we have it ticking off 0 0 0 0 because we haven't told it to do anything yet so let's go in here and let's tell it to increment the tick variable every time that the on timer function runs so let's say tick plus plus like so now we'll notice over here that on each incoming second that our on timer gets triggered this is steadily increasing over here now here we have a variable a static variable called tick what if we were to make another function and in that function we also declared another static variable called tick you suppose they would interfere with each other let's do that first of all let's move this on calculate function down out of the way and let's just make this another function we'll call it function one it's of the void type func one there we go and let's go in here and let's say almost exactly the same thing that we say in the on timer function here we're going to declare the same uh, static integer called tick in this function except in this one let's bump it up oh I don't know 10 at a time let's say plus equals 10 whoops 10 that's going to make it inc increase whatever it has saved in its memory in that static variable it's going to bump it up by 10 each time so it should start off at 0 obviously and then it should be 10 and then it should be 20 and 30 and 40 as it prints in here now of course we don't have any way of making the func1 run yet we haven't called this function up in the on timer function so let's go up here in the on timer function and let's just simply say func1 and that's going to make it run this so the on timer function is going to run it's going to print the tick and then it's going to print the tick variable on this one let's make another one too what the heck let's make a couple more there we go we'll go call this func2 call this func3 uh, if we multiply, if we add 10 to that one, let's add 100 to this one, and let's add 1,000 to this one. So this one should start off at 0, and then be 1,000, and be 2,000, and so on and so forth. So, now, let's watch what happens when I compile this. Of course, I haven't, make sure it compiles first. I haven't called any of these functions yet, except the func1 function. Let's put func2. and func3 like so now notice when it runs over here what it does each of these static variables is kept in each respective function even though they all have the same name they're all called tick the computer has these stored in different places in memory it knows that this tick static variable is not the same as this tick static variable which is not the same as this one and not the same as that one even though they have the same name 
they are associated with different functions and the computer knows that. The computer memory sets aside a different memory address to store each one of these and so they don't interfere with one another. The reason why I'm showing you this is so that you realize that if you write several functions and in you, you make a standard set of lines that you always start your functions with that you only want to run once every candle. And I'll show you how to do that. But you can use that same named static variable in every one of your functions. And if you include six or seven of those functions into your program, each of those six or seven functions, even though they have the same named static variable, will keep their information separate from one another. But you can see here how that these are each keeping their own piece of information as time goes on and as the seconds go by. So let's go back over to the original test indicator and I'll show you what we can do with this information now. All right, so here we are back at the original test indicator with our is new candle function call and our is new candle function. And what we're going to do, uh, first of all, we're going to get rid of this call. And we're going to put each one of these in their own function. We'll call it uh, MA funk and MA2, MA1 funk and MA2 funk. And we'll call them up here. We'll just simply say MA1 funk and MA2 funk. Now let's turn these into functions right here. You just cut that out right there and get down here below the uh, on calculate function with that code and let's just make this a void function called MA1 func. No parameters need to be sent along with it. And there we have the function call calls this function on each tick. Let's do the same thing with this code here. Move it down here. We'll make this the MA2 func. So basically this is all the oncalculate function is doing now. It's calling these two functions down here. Put one of these in here, separate these out a little bit. That's control forward slash makes that. Now what we want is when it calls either of these functions, at the beginning of each function, we only want these to run at the beginning of each candle. So we're going to put, uh, we're going to declare static variables in each one of these functions with the same name because we found out that's okay to do that. Let's go down here to our is new candle function. Let's just kind of copy this. Put this up here at the top of this function, and we're, we'll just we'll just declare one called candle time, okay? Our candle time function, and right at the beginning of this function, and you can put this at the beginning of any function that you only run want to run once per candle. We're going to declare a candle time function, or rather the candle time variable, and we're going to see at the beginning of the function. If we have already been here before, is time zero the same as candle time? And if it is, then we're simply going to return. This is a void function, so you just say return. Now, when we call the MA1 function and it reads these lines, if it's already ran on this candle, it'll come right here and it'll return. None of this code will run. The only time this code will ever run is when this is not true when we have a new candle. But when it does run, we want to make sure that we save, as we do down here, we save the candle time in time zero, well, we want to save the candle time is time zero. Now I can take this same code right here and put it into any function that I only want to run one time per candle. I compile it. Well, let me put 
Let me get test two off of the chart over here. Let me put test one on the chart. And you can see as soon as I loaded on the chart, it told me this, but let me compile it. You can see it's working just like it's supposed to work. So we can get rid of the is new kind of function down here. And anytime that you want to write a function, you only want it to run once per candle, then you can put this code in, in that function and it's a standalone function. You don't have to remember to include the is new candle function when you write new code or anything like that. Now I will offer this word of caution. If the function that you're running and that you only want to run once per candle, if that function is actually something that makes a trading decision, in other words, that function does something and decides that it's time to take a buy or a sell trade, you want to make sure that in addition to making sure it's a new candle, that you make sure that there's not any trades open yet. Because what can happen is if you have a function that says if two moving averages are crossed a certain direction then take a trade and you do that and you take a trade and you're in a trade if something should happen to where you have to restart your uh, expert advisor when it does that it will start over again and clear out your static variables and it'll think it's a new candle that first tick and it'll try to tr try to take a trade again so if you do have a function that actually is serious and, and makes it take a trade when that function runs if it's a new candle and their signal is there make sure that if you don't want to enter more than one trade at once make sure that in addition to checking that it's a new candle before you place that trade put a check in there to make sure that you don't already have a trade open so you won't get into that situation so there you go guys another coding tutorial for here on youtube i want to thank my patreon patrons who think enough of me to chip in a dollar or so every time that I put one of these coding videos out. Uh, I only charge my Patreon patrons for videos about coding like this, not all of the videos that I put on YouTube. But if this kind of, if this kind of stuff appeals to you, think you'd like to learn how to, to uh, do this, then by all means, uh, go up here, look through the course. There's four main modules to the big full course that takes you from knowing absolutely nothing about coding to uh, writing your own EAs and expert advisors and of course we have the new course now about how to make graphical interfaces how to make drop down lists and push buttons and all of those kinds of things if that appeals to you but anyway I thank you for watching it may, and once again let me remind you to subscribe I'm really excited we're getting close to 10,000 subscribers now I think we're at 8800 or something but if you are subscribed make sure you click that little icon and, and get notified whenever I put out one of these videos. Thanks for watching. I wish you the best in your trading and in your coding. Pip pip. Hey guys, I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel to keep updated on everything that's going on. And also follow me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash learningql4 for trading and chart reading information. And of course you can go to learningql4.com to learn how to code.